Viewer discretion is advised. I suffered from nightmares for years. Name a way to die and it happened to me in my dreams. Being cut in half, drowned, eviscerated by amorphous creature. Just dying each and every night with a myriad of ways and no possible comfort in sight. Other than waking up, of course. One night, as if I have completely given up resisting the nightmare, which I usually done so via the means of pills and whatnot, I decided to just let whatever nightmare that was about to consume me to do whatever it wanted. I've suffered for so many years, what's another night? However, that night was different. It started out bad, as usual. Thunderous black clouds roaring, looming above a field of cracked grounds that seemed to stretch on forever. Then, countless enormous asteroids appeared in the sky, superheated rocks shooting down into the earth around me as it traveled towards me, piercing through the atmosphere with ease. However, as I was about to accept my fate to be squashed by the space rocks, the nightmare took a strange turn of events. A yellow streak of light zoomed across the sky towards the asteroid that was closing in on me. And as soon as it made contact with it, the Earth-destroying rocks shattered in a thousand pieces as a faceless entity appeared in front of me. Still, the nightmare went on. While I was untouched by the asteroids, they kept raining down all around me, collapsing grounds, forming deep pools of lava. Yet, I felt somewhat at ease even in front of the featureless entity which by its nature should be anxiety-inducing. It was unlike any nightmare I'd had where I would usually be tortured and killed in one way or the other, just unending sufferings that seemed to last longer than the night. But this isn't the opposite of nightmare neither, just different. It was as if the entity had merely altered it to fit itself. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you a SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object, SCP-2840. SCP-2840, also known as Apex Nightmare, is an incorporeal psychic entity that lives within the minds of humans who are experiencing REM sleep. It gravitates towards individuals that have history of chronic nightmares and night terrors. Subjects suffering from recurring nightmares will find themselves unable to experience the recurring dream again by 2840. When the subject is awake, 2840 becomes inactive and seems to have no adverse effects on the host. At least, that is according to all recent testing. 2840 is only able to reside within the subconscious of a single person at a time, but is capable of transferring to another host if they are within 300 feet and are currently experiencing REM sleep. Unfortunately, Foundation researchers have been unable to determine how 2840 travels between hosts, other than it being a psychic entity. Therefore, it cannot be tracked and can only be found after a host realizes it and gives a report to the researchers if that is the case. The only detrimental effect of 2840, if one could call it that, is that hosts will forget minor and inane details to their dreams but will remember them on the whole. Individuals who are hosts have said that their nightmares and frightening dreams often have an abrupt shift in scenarios. To elaborate, if a host is experiencing a nightmare in which they are being chased by a killer, that killer will be shred to pieces or eaten, or the host will be transported to a safer location with the killer much more docile and less aggressive. In all cases, the threats are either neutralized or the dream shifts to something far more manageable and less threatening. In some occurrences, 2840 will replace the threat and will bring no harm to the host. Host subjects of 2840 will always be aware that they are in fact dreaming and that nothing will be allowed to bring them harm due to influence of 2840. Despite 2840 becoming a terrifying and anxiety-inducing presence within their dreams, as it'll take on the forms of a featureless humanoid or just simply voids, they do not fear it and instead feel safe and relaxed when in its presence. Fascinatingly, the hosts are able to decipher what form or shape 2840 took in their dreams and can recount it in detail when they are awake. 2840 was discovered in an undisclosed psychiatric hospital. Dozens of patients reported similar dreams wherein they were experiencing horrifying dreams, only to be saved by a featureless yet benevolent entity. The Foundation then embedded an agent within the hospital to analyze the situation and investigate the potential threats of 2840. 
When none could be found, the agent then figured out a solution to contain the incorporeal entity. The then current host of 2840 was determined to be one of the patients within the hospital was extracted for containment. A couple more D-class subjects were chosen to host 2840 as well. They were ordered to follow a strict sleep schedule as outlined by Dr. Bridge and are housed in a humanoid containment suite within Site 66. The hosts are treated fairly and are given whatever they need to be comfortable within reason. Lastly, anyone not cleared to approach 2840 will be demoted, and that is not up for debate. While 2840 has not shown any violent tendencies toward its hosts nor anyone else, researchers have determined it to be safe, but have given it a Euclid class for its potential to escape containment. The O5 Council is skeptical of the supposed good nature of 2840. It has not been uncommon for classifications to change from safe to keter in the past once more information had been obtained, often with disasters preceding such a change. Their primary concerns are twofold. One, why is it that 2840 takes it upon itself to save its host from their nightmares? What does it have to gain from such an undertaking? Secondly, is this psychic entity an actual entity or a psychic parasite of some kind that feeds off the fear and hate generated by nightmares, and the saving is merely a byproduct of its actions? This leads the O5 Council to believe that 2840 may at some point in the future become a threat. Lead researchers of the site were gathered in the room for a briefing. SCP-2840 has recently come to my attention and the attention of the rest of the O5 Council. We believe that while 2840 is harmless for the time being, it could change at any given time. I understand that its Euclid status is given simply because of how easily it could transfer itself to another host and escape confinement. The O5 Council, however, believes it could potentially have some hidden motives we are not yet privy to. We are rather tired of being blindsided with SCPs which were given safer classifications only for them to become Keter and threaten the world. We are protectors not gods. One day, if we are unlucky enough, we may encounter an SCP who may do such a thing again. At least the next time, we would like to be a bit more prepared. So stay vigilant. That is all. Thank you. Some researchers secretly scoffed at this as they believed to have studied 2840 in depth enough to determine that it posed no threat to society at large at all. Others took the Council's caution to heart and began heavily documenting each and everything about 2840, and Dr. Bridge was one of them. It can't simply do it out of altruism, can it? There has to be some sort of motive, Dr. Bridge thought. He then asked the host of 2840 to record everything they remember about their dream each day after they wake up. They reported various scenarios. One mentioned being chased by a serial killer, and then saw the pursuer was attacked and torn to pieces by a featureless figure. Another was lost in being hunted in a dark forest, with the hunted being the figure going after him in a relaxed pace. Another reported dreaming vividly about drowning in endless pitch black water, then experienced a sudden relief when the water disappeared, causing him to be falling down in nothingness. So the entity didn't appear when the water disappeared, or when you were falling? No, but I could feel its presence. When I was falling rapidly with no end in sight, I should be very afraid or at least anxious, yet I was completely at ease. I felt safe, as if that thing was there all along, like it was all around me, telling me, you're safe now. So it killed your pursuer, but left you alone. Yeah, it was horrifying. I mean, seeing a person being torn apart so violent like that has to be traumatizing, right? But I wasn't traumatized. In fact, I felt grateful. And I knew I was being hunted. Then I saw the featureless thing, and boy was it so much more scarier when I couldn't even see who or what was after me. I tell you, being alone in that dark forest was enough to creep me out. I didn't need another thing that I can't see to be hunting me. Know what I'm saying? Throughout the reports, Dr. Bridge gathered one common trait. While their nightmares were altered, but take away the sense of safety experienced by the subject when they saw 2840, they were still, by all accounts, nightmares. In the dreams, threats were eliminated and fear was made disappear, almost as if they were all consumed by 2840. Then, instill a sense of security to its host, have them recognize it as savior, the predator of lesser nightmares. 
In other words, the Apex Nightmare. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.